Welcome to Lord and Richards Radio, a program that will enable you to become more financially independent and prosperous from a biblical point of view. Tune in each week to learn how to prosper through good markets and bad. Now, here's our host, Colin Richards, Denver's Biblical Investment Advisor. Hi, friends. I'm glad to be with you today on Lord and Richards Radio. I'm Colin Richards founder and president of Lord & Richards. We're a team of advisors who are dedicated to helping people just like you retire financially independent. And we're doing that every single day. On this show, we're discussing investing and planning from the perspective of key biblical principles, a little bit different way of looking at money. We also talk about how to use methods and strategies that will enable you to prosper through both up and down markets. And that's so important in today's volatile world. I'd love to chat with you. My team and I would love to help you talk to you about your specific questions regarding retirement and saving and investing from a biblical point of view. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Well, today we're going to be talking about a lot of the turbulence that many of you are feeling in the world today and the volatility in the markets that's resulting from that turbulence. Uh, We've talked about inflation being a major concern as we see oil prices going up, commodities being a concern as we see certain metals and products that have been in short supply not only because of the recent conflicts in Eastern Europe, but also because of supply disruptions even prior to that because of the pandemic. And then, of course, agriculture as uh, areas in Ukraine and Russia that have been considered part of the breadbasket of the world have been uh, sanctioned on the Russian side or maybe closed off on the Ukrainian side so that they can feed their own people. So we have a lot of reasons for concern. But, you know, we're going to be talking today about why, as Christians, we really can put that concerns into the hands of God. You know, people like you that we're talking to every single day are worried about events like this that are out of your control. And they're worried that those events are going to harm your retirement. So what we do at Lord & Richards to help with that is we build a plan for you to achieve financial independence and enjoy retirement without worry. And we do that all from a biblical point of view. The reason we want you to be financially independent in spite of the world's volatility, the economic, the political volatility of this world, is so that you can do amazing things for God with the bountiful resources He's placed at your disposal. We want you to be able to help people and invest in lives and make a difference for eternity. Well, today's founding principle continues to be managing risk as a steward, which is one of the core values at Lord & Richards. We want to be considered stewards, not owners, of what God has entrusted to us. And we want to manage the risk of those assets that God puts in our hands, knowing that they don't truly belong to us. They're God's. So we're going to trust God in this. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 may be very familiar to you. It says simply, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. That's an amazing verse. I know it's probably been an encouragement to you in times of crisis or difficulty or anxiety or fear. And you know, that's one of the things I've discovered, even among God's people, during many of the events of the last several years that have created such volatility, the pandemic, wars, rumors of wars, is anxiety. I've mentioned to you that fear, on the one hand, is a bad response, and greed, on the other hand, is a bad response. Neither of those is a good idea. Fear makes you do things irrationally that could cost you in the long run. And you know what? Greed has a similar result. They just come at it from a different point of view. Fear says, you know, I'm going to take all my money and just bury it under the mattress or bury it in the backyard. Greed says things like, you know, since oil is scarce right now, I'm going to buy oil. And that's kind of the mentality we saw during the pandemic when people would buy up supplies of things, raising the prices, creating a a, a false demand. So at Lord & Richards, we're not encouraging our clients to buy up 
oil that's not in good, uh, that is in high demand, and just to make a profit. That would be greed. So fear on the one hand, greed on the other. You know, anxiety or fear betrays, according to this verse, a lack of confidence in the Lord. It simply means that we've stopped trusting God and we've started looking to our own selves. And what we see from our point of view looks scary, right? It looks pretty scary. But we know that we have a God who's in control. Another principle that we derive from this passage of Scripture is that coming up with your own solutions financially, economically, or otherwise, apart from God, is a road to fear and disaster. You know, one of the reasons you have fear is because you're leaning on your own solutions. You're leaning on your own understanding, and it's hard to see a way out. It's hard to see how it's going to end well for you. And yet we know that if we stop leaning on our own understanding and we start leaning on God, things are going to turn around. Literally, this verse tells us that there is no area of your life that God is not interested in helping you with. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him, not just financially, but with your family, with your job, with your health, and on and on it goes. So there's no area of of your life God is not interested in helping in, and finance is one of those areas. And here's another principle. As you let him take control, he will then guide you in the right path. He's going to give you guidance and direction about what to do. He's going to give you peace, not peace based on a false hope or based on the conclusions that you've drawn merely from careful study or analysis, but he's going to give you a peace that originates in the spirit, not just in your mind. So those are some wonderful truths. Now, how do we apply those in today's volatile world? As I said, what we do is we help you build a financial plan, a comprehensive financial plan. Did you know that you can have real peace through a financial plan based upon the principles found in God's Word, and we can do that literally in writing? We can put together a written plan. That plan includes five key parts. That's going to begin with a written risk reduction plan. If you're fearful of risk, If you're fearful of loss, you know what? That's not all bad. It's your response to that. If you stop looking at things through your own point of view and start looking at things through God's point of view, you realize that there are biblical principles that guide you. We can look to the parables that our Lord taught, the principles found in the book of Proverbs and elsewhere in Scripture. And so what you need is a plan to manage risk in your portfolio. There's always risk of some kind, but is it written down And are you able to manage it so that it doesn't damage your retirement future, damage your ability to help others, damage your ability to get through retirement without running out of money? And that brings up, of course, the need for a written income plan, a plan to make sure you never run out of money before you run out of life so that you never have to go back to the job. You can always focus more on where you're spending time with the people that you love, doing the things that you love for the kingdom of God. For many of us, that means also that we need to get a good tax plan in place because the tax man is coming. We feel that bullseye. And again, fear is that natural response. But instead of fearing, we can take a plan based on biblical principles and replace that fear with faith. Faith that with good advice and through wisdom and counsel, the Bible says a multitude of counselors, we can get through this together. We know the government's going to raise taxes on you. It's just a matter of time. They were planning on doing it this year. They're going to do it as soon as they can. Why? Because expenses exceed income. So they're never going to solve the problem on the expense side because they can't get agreement. But they're going to try to solve it on the income side, and that means taxes. So do you have a written risk reduction plan, a written income plan, and a written plan to reduce or eliminate taxes both now and in the future? Most of us realize that our health is frail. It's fragile. Uh, We feel invincible when we're so young, and as we get older, we suddenly realize that, you know, our times truly are in the Lord's hands. Do you have a written health care plan? You say, oh, I've got health insurance or Medicare. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a plan to deal with those expenses that aren't covered by health insurance, that aren't covered by Medicare. What are you talking about, Colin? I'm talking about chronic illness, illness that lasts for more than 90 days when Medicare stops and the bill starts coming to you. Have you got a written plan to deal with it? Have you tested your portfolio to make sure you could pay for that? The average stay is four years. The average cost today for skilled nursing, $9,400 a person. 
when I talk to people in their 60s, it's usually going to be, if it's a four-year stay, a million-dollar bill. I don't want you to have to deal with that without a plan in place. And the good news is you can put a plan in place and deal with it in advance. And of course, finally, we want, we want a great written estate plan to make sure that the assets we've worked so hard for and stewarded over a lifetime aren't wasted on the government or nursing homes or hospitals. And that's what a great estate plan will do for you. Well, I'd love to visit with you about this. I have a fantastic team that works with me every single day to help folks you just like you to become financially independent. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. You're listening to The Lord and Richard Show, and this is Colin Richards, president and founder, and I'm thrilled to be with you today talking about one of our core values at Lord and Richards, which is to manage risk as a steward. And we've been dialing that in from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. For those just joining us, you can always find more about us at lordandrichards.com. And so as we learn about trusting God instead of ourselves, to not lean to our own understanding, but to acknowledge Him in all our ways, we learn that even in the area of finance, God's going to direct our path. And that really applies in the emotional area of financial decision-making around investing. You know, when we get market volatility, you begin to see that the average person is going to tend to respond emotionally. No matter how logical they want to be, it just comes up. And the question is, what are you going to do with that emotion? Well, let's start a little bit by talking about what market volatility is. You know, volatility is when markets suddenly start swinging around, going from one extreme to the other. And while we're loving it the whole time that they go up, we definitely don't love it when they go down. And sometimes they go far enough down that we enter what's called correction territory. Now, you might wonder, what is a correction? Well, technically speaking, anywhere from 5 to to 9% down on your portfolio, or if we're talking about the market or one of its indices like the S&P 500, 500 strong equities in the United States, or a bond index, or the NASDAQ, or a foreign index, whatever it is, if it goes down 5 to 9%, then it's in a pullback, Okay. Now, if it goes beyond that and it's 10 to 19 percent, we call that correction territory. And we see a lot of those. We see a lot of corrections. And then if it goes beyond that and it's 20 percent or more down, that could be 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, then we call it a bear market. And the fun thing about that is that Wall Street has a bull out there on Wall Street, but you can't find the bear anywhere. It's like you guys really only have one side to your thinking, don't you? It's funny, you're always looking at their recommendations. Well, maybe you're not, but when I look at their recommendations, they're always saying buy. They're never saying sell. So let's put that into context. If we're talking about volatility, corrections, market swings, there have been 27 corrections in the S&P 500 from 1945 till this year. 27 of those. That's somewhere between minus 10 and minus 19. That's a lot. That's a lot of bad years, as we might call it. That's an average, if you want to know, of one correction every 2.8 years. So about every third year, we're coming back into correction. We're losing 10 to 20 percent. And what is surprising is that folks act as if that's completely unforeseen. How could we ever, you know, have that happen? And particularly when we look at portfolios, a lot of times folks will really react negatively over just a couple of percentage points drop, when probably what we need to do is educate folks more about how this is going to happen. It is going to be part of your world. And as Warren Buffett said, if you can't afford to own a stock for 10 years, you shouldn't own it for 10 minutes. Probably need to be in cash, right? Because if your stomach is going to react from 2 to 5 to 10 percent to 20 percent, in a negative fashion and cause you want to hit the road with your portfolio, the stock market is going to be a tough place for you. The people who say they figured it out, you know, you can invest in stocks, liquid investments, and never experience declines, that's just not true. Now, there are safe investments, and we talk about them here, 
but we're talking about the regular stock market. And so how about from the period of time from 1974, okay, 1974, five of those market corrections that we experienced, you know, from 1974 until now have been bear markets, 20% or more, okay? So that gets to be a much smaller period. You know, every seven to 10 years, we're going to see a serious drop. You say, I can't handle that. Then you might not want to be in the market. Now, the good news is there are ways to mitigate losses, to manage risk. And that's what we put into a risk management plan, a written risk management plan, so that we know as we test your portfolio, as we take it through real historical time periods going back in the past, and as we test out into the future, pretending all kinds of good and bad things happen, we can guess kind of the range of possibilities of both positive and negative in your portfolio. So it's important to know that. So we've experienced plenty of corrections in bear markets in our time. What, what causes that? Well, a lot of times folks are just taking profits, right? The market's gone up long enough in their estimation. And what they don't want to do is risk the possibility that all these gains will not be realized. You know, folks who buy and hold forever and never realize a gain just because maybe they don't want to incur a tax are missing out. And so people will take money off the table in order to realize those gains, put money in their pocket, and then go reinvest elsewhere. Uh, corporate earnings come out, and maybe there's a little bit of bad news and everything swings one way or the other. Tech te technical analysis traders are out there, and they're just basing everything on the fear, the emotion, the swings of the market, what people have done in the past. Uh, it's not really based on the fundamentals of any company. Two big ones that we've seen a lot of over probably our lifetimes, if you're listening in today, you've probably experienced the 2008, 2009 market crash, the 2000 crash, and a lot of times there's a black swan event. It's totally unforeseen. How about a pandemic? How about a war? Um, how about 9-11, black swan events? Or just normal things that come around that create fear, creates fear. That's the big factor. There used to be a show called Fear Factor, and people would do all kinds of crazy things. Um, if you don't like fear, you know, then you need to stay tuned because <laughs> we're going to help you learn how to deal with that. And I'd love to talk to you about that because I think there are really some smart things you can do. And my team and I are helping people every day to develop a plan to make sure you don't have a bottomless pit underneath your feet but to put a floor, to put a net under your feet, to build a written risk management plan so that you can sleep easy at night, so that you can have a portfolio that reflects how you feel about risk, not just what an advisor thinks. I'd love to visit with you. I'd love to learn more about your goals and see how we can help. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. You're listening to The Lord and Richards Show, and this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord and Richards. And I'm always excited to help folks in any way I can. I'd like to encourage you to click over to lordandrichards.com to learn more about our team, learn more about what we offer our clients every single day. Well, we're continuing our discussion today of market volatility based on the principles found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll direct your path. So we're talking about not leaning to our own understanding, those impulses that maybe drive us to fear or to make irrational decisions as a result of things that are going on in and around us in the world today. And so what I want to help you with is understanding market volatility. And we've talked a little bit about what a correction is, what a, um, what a bear market is. And we've been talking about what triggers market volatility, including just unexpected events like black swans or general fears around what's going on in the world. So what does a market correction mean for your investments? Number one, understand that it's normal. Again, we don't want you to go through it without a safety net, so we don't have to have a bottomless pit under our feet. But we want to make, sh make sure that when markets drop, we accept that as an ordinary, normal thing. Now, I know you've worked hard for your nest egg, your retirement. 
and you want to make sure you don't lose it, right? So that's why it's important to build a risk management plan so that the movement within your portfolio is within parameters that we set together based on not only your goals, but also on your fears. Two things to remember, buy low and sell high, right? We all know that. Buy low, sell high. We want to buy at a discount. We want to sell at a premium. You're in it for the long term. What happens when we start to make irrational or emotional decisions in the midst of market volatility? In the midst of market volatility, we begin to make foolish mistakes that can literally take money out of your pocket. History tells us that this is going to pass. The markets always recover. And so what we want to do is if you feel strongly during a a period of market volatility that, um, you know, you really maybe are too aggressively invested, then we want to take a step back, build a plan to shift some assets as the market recovers, right? So we don't leave you in a position where all of a sudden you go to cash and you truly lock in a permanent loss on your portfolio. So let's talk a little bit about fear. Okay. I understand when folks are still worried. That's why, again, we take a lot of time at Lord and Richards to help understand, uh, both on your side and our side, how you feel about risk. We don't want you going through the market drops that inevitably happen with fear and with anxiety, with the urge to run to the door, to, to, to the doors. But what we do is we do that in advance in a safe, antiseptic, clinical way. We take some tests and we do some fun things on the board and we help you determine, hey, this is, if I were experiencing a market drop, this is the range that I'd want to stay in and not experience anxiety. This is the range that would allow me to not lose sleep at night. And then we can help design a portfolio that can stay as close as possible to that range. You know, we've experienced a lot of volatility recently, and some of us are starting to realize, wow, I may not have been as aggressive as an investor as I thought. Don't fall into what we call the investor psychology cycle. Uh, It really, unfortunately, starts with, you know, kind of all the hype. Hey, you know what? The market is looking good, you know, so wow, I'm smart. I'm euphoric. I'm thrilled. The market's going up. There's enthusiasm, excitement, optimism. And the market then begins to cave. And we begin to have a sense of desperation, a sense of capitulation, a a sense of despondency and panic. And we make poor decisions and we sell as the market drops. And often you know that the market has reached its low when the average investor is selling because that's how long they tend to wait and then they tend to get back in after the bull market, right? Because then there's hope, relief, optimism. And then as we continue in that cycle, we just find that our poor decision-making has cost us literally years of potential retirement. So what do we need to do instead? Well, what we need to do is build a plan, a comprehensive plan to make sure that we don't make emotional decisions that could potentially damage our retirement, but rather we focus on building a plan for your retirement future that allows you to sleep at night, to retire without worry, without anxiety, a plan that addresses your feelings about risk, a plan that addresses your income needs, a plan that addresses other areas such as health care risk. You know, the number one cause of bankruptcy in retirement today is health care, chronic illness, long-term care. It's a devastating cost, and we want to make sure that we plan for it. And then, of course, building a plan to make sure that you don't pay more in taxes than you should. The Bible says, oh, uh, pay to Caesar what is Caesar's, and then pay to God what is God's. And I always say, you know, you render to Caesar, but not one dime more than he deserves. Through good planning, careful planning, we can help avoid money just trickling out of your home, trickling out of your family, trickling out of your legacy into the hands of the government, nursing homes, and, of course, hospitals. And then, of course, looking ahead to the future when you pass on. Proverbs 13 tells us a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So knowing what's going to happen when you die with your money and where it's going to go and how it's going to be used, all of these things come together, and we call them a financial independence roadmap. And the first step is really just to get together and talk about your situation, learn your goals. It's complimentary to meet with us at Lord & Richards. We employ a team, a powerful team, a compassionate team, 
of advisors who are helping folks every day, just like you, to get to and through retirement, to make it without fear and worry, to have a written plan, and then to keep that plan updated for the rest of your life. It'd be my privilege to help you. It'd be my privilege to talk to you and learn more about your goals, your dreams, your values, and then help you build a plan for your retirement future. It really involves uh, sitting down, taking that first step. It involves giving us a call and setting a time to meet. I'd love to do that. I'd love to introduce you to our team. I'd love to exper- for you to experience the difference of what it means to work with an advisor at Lord & Richards. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Investment advisory service is offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC.